Welcome back and this could easily be the most important video that I've ever made and we're not only going to talk about the 8 best patterns that you can trade every single day but we're going to go much deeper. I'm going to talk about why do trends move, how do other traders see the market, what makes a good trade a good trade, when is the right time to trade and why have you been struggling so far. So get ready and enjoy the video. So the first one I want to talk about is the double fake out and I want to go really in depth here. So even if you may have heard about fake outs, you're going to learn something here. So stay tuned and this is really fascinating. So what we see here, let's go step by step and we can see the market has been trending higher, obviously very strongly. Then we see that here in the last part, the market struggled a little bit. Later, we will see why this is a price divergence and it means that the market is struggling. The market hasn't really been pushing higher. And then here afterwards, the market just drifted sideways never really had another attempt to rush into new highs, which is a sign that the market is kind of losing strength. And sometimes we call those consolidations when the market is going sideways. However, when those consolidations, they take very long and they don't unfold in another continuation, then often we talk about distributions. Distributions is where the traders that have been buying up the market here, they're sitting now on a substantial amount of profits probably. So they are thinking very hard about taking profits. And if you are in a buy trade and you are taking profit, that means the market is slowing down. It contributes to the selling pressure. So we can see the market hasn't made another attempt here and probably a lot of traders are ready to get short. And then this happens. This is what we can refer to as a momentum shift. The momentum is clearly shifting from an uptrending market to then a long sideways and then this happens. This could have been news driven, it doesn't really matter. But what we can see, this is the largest candle that we have seen here by far. And even if we would zoom out, I would assume this is the largest candle that we have seen probably for hundreds and of hundreds of candles. However, if you've been trading for a while, you will know that those are pretty hard to trade because the market just moves so much. What happens is a lot of amateur traders, they're gonna jump on this candle somewhere maybe halfway, maybe here three quarters, they wanna catch it. But then what happens is that it reverses and you are left with a very unfavorable position. And even if you wait and you wait for the market to close here, this is very hard to trade because it's gonna ruin your reward to risk ratio. If you go short here, which makes a lot of sense though in the big picture, you would have to put your stop loss somewhere up here because this is where the stop zone is. A stop zone or a stop rather that would be placed underneath the area here would be very vulnerable and it's very common to see a retest here. Sometimes we'll even see retests up in here, that's no problem, but you really want to make sure that you avoid the most common stop runs and the most common stop runs happen here underneath the breakout area. So what I would recommend, if you see something like that, don't be frustrated. I know you've been probably waiting a long time for this to happen. You kind of knew what's going to happen and then you see the market seemingly run away. However, over the long term, and I've been trading for well over 15 years, you will be glad that you skipped those and very often you get a second opportunity. And now this happens and this is very, very classic. First of all, everyone who tried to catch the, the down move here, the momentum shift is probably very frustrated. A lot of traders will have hit their stop loss here and probably a lot of traders have hit their stop here. So in those cases, don't worry if you miss those, you will be glad. And very often you get a second chance. And that second chance is now gonna present maybe itself shortly. What we see is that the market moved all the way back into the ultimate high here the highest point of this trend. And at this point, it is, I would say, a little bit more bearish than bullish. However, I would not be very interested in getting a bullish trade unless we get above this area here. And if I wanna be short, I wanna see a little bit of a move away. I wanna see that this level is holding as resistance and that we are seeing increased selling pressure. And this is what happens afterwards. This is what we refer to as a deceleration. I have an example later in this video where we talk about an advanced deceleration and how to trade them step by step. But basically what you wanna see is very important is that the resistance is holding that the market is not able to push into a new high because that would be clearly a continuation signal of the bullish trend. However, what we see now is confirming our thesis from here. We saw that we had a long distribution, probably a lot of profit taking. Then we had this big shift where suddenly the buyers were withdrawing and the sellers are really taking over. That's a clear sign that from this point onwards, I would be a little bit more bearish than bullish, but I would wait for my entry point. Then we have our stop run here. We hit all of the stops that are triggered or are placed in this area here. And then we see that the bearish momentum is returning. At this point, 
you can get into a short trade with a much more favorable reward to risk ratio because your stop loss could be much smaller and also the target will be much further away from your entry point compared to if you somehow chase this candle down and get a much worse entry at a lower point. If you wanna go short, you wanna go short for the highest possible price because that's where you get the biggest bang for your buck, the biggest reward to risk ratio. And then you can see afterwards the market unfolded very nicely and the new trend emerged here. So a double fake out is something that happens quite often. And if you've been struggling with breakouts and you're interested in fake outs, start paying attention to this pattern. And, and the context here is really important. You wanna see a strong trend you want to see a consolidation, a sideways phase. You want to clearly see that the previous downtrend has been broken with something like a momentum shift that really shakes up and changes the whole picture. Then you wait for the stop run and then you want to see selling resume here and that's your entry then. Now let's look at another example which is very similar to the previous one, right? We have an uptrend, then we have a long consolidation. So far everything is exactly the same like in the one before but we can learn quite a bit. And this is really helpful to understanding when is a market reversing? When is a market just pausing to get ready for the next push? So let's study the pullback death here and what happens in this consolidation. First of all, I would recommend, this is the 15 minute time frame. So I activated the daily central pivot point. I made many videos about this on my YouTube channel on how to set this up, check my YouTube charts. I show you exactly how to get this indicator on TradingView, it's totally for free. And what happens is with the daily pivot point, it acts kind of like a trend support and also as a trend filter, it helps you to understand the underlying trend dynamics. Because what happens if you're in an uptrend, generally the trend will perform above the central pivot point and very often pullbacks will pull back into the central pivot point. And that is really helpful to understand and to analyze, is a pullback just a pullback or is a pullback actually what we have seen in the beginning a momentum shift. So let's keep going and let's follow. And what we can see here is that the market actually did pull back into the central pivot point. And I haven't cherry picked this example. I've made many videos in the past about the central pivot point and I've shown you dozens and dozens of examples. If you pull up the daily central pivot point on your chart and you examine trends, it's very important to examine trends, not ranges, then you will see that this is a very, very helpful tool. Obviously, nothing works 100%, but it's a very, very important tool. And what we can see, first of all, let's look in the past. And the market did use the previous central pivot point as support and the support held and initiated the next uptrending move. Now you can see this was a very strong push. We got away from the pivot point. This is our new pivot point. We pull back into the pivot point. And what we have is a failure to get below the pivot point. We have one, two, three candles. We have an engulfing candle here as the third candle with a large wick, and we're seeing more buying. This is very interesting at this point because it shows you that this market is a little bit more bullish than bearish, whereas the other one with a big momentum shift is a little bit more bearish than bullish, although it looks kind of similar. And those distinctions are very, very important because if a trend structure is broken and if we have too much momentum coming into the market, into the opposite direction, that can change the dynamics. And then what we see is very different than what we have seen in the first example, because the market does return into the previous highs, just like it did in the previous example. Remember, we had the stop zone and we marked our last high. But in this case, we never see a resume of bearish pressure. We have not even a single red candle come into the market after we hit the resistance. That's a very, very different picture. And then we break out. And I highlighted in the first example that it's important to wait for the market to make a move at those resistance levels, at those key areas. So in this case, I would not advise to trade long unless we get above this area. Just that's why I highlighted it in the first example. You wanna make sure that levels get broken and that gives you a whole different picture. If we would see that the market suddenly keeps struggling with this area and we see bearishness coming back into the market, I would be way more cautious to approach this market with a long mindset. I wouldn't necessarily go short right away because the pivot still has held in the past, which is not a very bearish signal, but I would be way more cautious with bullish trades and I would not get into it right away. So that's really important to make the distinction and that is gonna help you a lot in your trading hope. Let's talk about the triple tab. One of my favorite patterns, and I've mentioned it many times in the past, but it's just such an important pattern and it's so helpful. So let's try to analyze it and let's learn a little bit more. First of all, again, it happens in a trend context. The market comes from a base breakout. We make a run here and we have a very strong trending market. 
we have a regular consolidation, no momentum shift, nothing very um, really stands out about this, just a normal pullback. We have another trending move, we have a small consolidation, another trending move, consolidation. But when we look at the highs, that's really the key here. Because we can see that, obviously, when we broke out from here, our base breakout from the consolidation, we made a significantly higher high, right? The market shot higher and we have a very high point. From here to here, the distance is obviously much shorter than from here to here. And then the distance from this high to this high is very, very minimal. It's barely able to make a higher high. We have a lot of rejection here at the candlestick wicks as we reach the level. So this shows us that there is already a lack of bullish momentum. Probably the people who wanted to buy this market got in quite early and who gets in here is and here is the one that are chasing the market that maybe have missed the mark, maybe they were not ready here. For whatever reason they didn't get in and they try to chase it, they may be frustrated that they missed it and there are not many people and also the ones who bought it from down here are now more inclined to take profits. That's really important. Always ask yourself, has the market moved so much that it is likely for traders to take profits and a trade profit is always contributing to the opposite force of what is going on on the trend. That's really important and it helps you put yourself in the shoes of other traders. Now let's keep going. And what we see here is then when we activate the RSI and you can use the RSI 14 period setting, that's a good default setting. When we add it, we can see that each high on the price action, this high, this high and this high is corresponding to a lower high on the RSI and the RSI is a momentum indicator. So the moment the indicator shows you how strong is the trend and it shows you that the trend is getting weaker and weaker each time the market pushed into the high. So the cool thing is about if you understand what a triple tap means and if you understand the, the relationship of highs and trends is that at one point you don't need the RSI anymore because you can read the divergence from the price action just by understanding the distance between highs, the depth of the pullbacks and the overall trend strength. So that's a good starting point. If you are just starting out, I would recommend use the RSI. I've been using the RSI for many years in the beginning and it's really helpful because it's just objective and it helps you to quantify what you're seeing, especially if you're not 100% sure. So that's a very good point or indicator to have. Then we also see after the triple tab, we see a lower high. This is very important now because it can show us that now the market is actually so weak on the bullish side that the bulls are not even able to get close to where we were previously. Again, I would not recommend to trade short just yet. If you're in a long trade, I would be really cautious here. Maybe consider taking profits, maybe try to lock in your profits with a stop trading approach, but try to protect your long position here and try, don't give everything back. And if you are trying to specialize in triple taps, that could be your signal that it is time to start watching the trade or the market rather, and then get ready for when we change the trend structure. The trend structure is changed, first of all, by high, uh, lower highs, which we have, but it's also changed by a break of the low structure. So you can see we put in here the double low and the market has defended the level. As long as this holds, I would be not very bearish, but I also obviously looking at this, I'm not very bullish, but I would be very cautious here and I would really need the market to get below this area to fully feel like a bear. And that's what happens here. Also, again, the pivot points, they're just so handy and they work really nice for trending markets. Let's see what happens in the past. We have the pivot here, here and here. It moves higher, right? And the market is not able to get below the pivot point. That's really important in a trend. If you see that suddenly the market is get, getting uh, below a pivot in an uptrend, that should be a very big warning signal. It's not a signal to completely uh, change the trend yet, but it's a very important signal. Also, you can look at the distance between the pivots. You can see the distance from here to here is very large, from here to here is still great, but smaller than here. Then from here and here, it's, uh, it's very small. Also, it's where we get below the pivot point. And now we have a very different understanding of what happens, right? We have the divergence, we have the triple tap, we have a long trend, which is ideal. The longer the trend that has been going on in the past, the more likely is it that the traders who have participated in the trend are likely to take profits. We have seen that in the stock market, in Bitcoin, for example, a long trend, a lot of traders are in this trend. And then as the trend shows signs of weakness, everybody runs to the door. And that's often where the trends change. And the longer the trend has been going on, very often, obviously not all the time, the greater and the more volatile the trend changes. And you can see we're making a run here at the lows and we're breaking the lows.
and then we unfold into the new downtrend. And what we see here is that the pivot structure reverses, right? The pivots are now going down from this to this to here to here. Obviously, every next pivot is lower than the one before. We run into pivots, we reject and retest them, and that is then a healthy downtrend. So now let's look at a complex flag and let's start looking at a few more more complex structures because the market unfolds in many different ways. So let's try to see what we can learn here. And I would always start by analyzing the highs and the lows, the distance between highs and lows, the depth of the market and also the candle size. So we can see that the market pushed into this high here, right? Obviously we made a move and the market afterwards until now was never able to reach this high. We can see we have a sell off, which when you look in the past, we do have consolidations, but nothing like this. And when you see that consolidations suddenly are much deeper and longer, that shows you a change in how the sellers and the buyers interact. Probably now we have way more sellers. Probably the buyers are running for the door, taking profits that contributes here to more and prolonged selling periods. We have a bullish period, but the market never gets back to the high. Then also what happens here is that the bearish candles are suddenly much larger than the bullish, whereas previously you can see the bullish candles were obviously always much larger and this changes. And in this context with already a lower high, that's quite important. We make here a lower high after that. We have we put in highs and lows and very often and not always will we see that the market is making a run to retest previous lows and highs. Not always, but if this happens and if it happens with a pattern, that's where I get really interested and we can improve our chart reading and we can improve the way we look at or find those because we can use things like the 100 period SMA. It's a long term moving average, but it's very helpful to understanding trend dynamics. On the left side, we can see the market moved over and above the moving average. We dip below it. We tried to get above it, but we rejected it. We came back into it. We retested it didn't get above it afterwards. We made a run and you can see very strong bearish candles as I pointed out, very strong bearish candles, very short bullish period. Then we have a prolonged run here into the moving average. No real bullish sign here yet. You can see we are not making any big moves here to the upside, but we have a consolidation and we retest previous lows. We retest here the moving average. That's a good resistance cluster. And what happens then afterwards is a momentum shift. But let's back up a little bit and we want to build confluence. We want to see more than one thing come together in one area. That's something that many traders struggle. They have very unrobust and very fragile, maybe that's a better word, trading systems. You don't only use the moving average. You don't only use a flag. You don't only use support and resistance. You try to put everything together, put it into an understanding of trend context, and that's where your trades get way more meaningful. Of course, it means that you're not going to trade as much as you would otherwise if you just look for a resistance, but the trades, generally speaking, they should improve in their quality because they have more robustness. We have the moving average that a lot of traders are watching. We have the previous low that is retested. This concept, a lot of traders watching. We have the trend context with the flag. Flags are very common. A lot of traders watch them. And the more the people watch it, very often they unfold in exactly the same way. That's how we build trading systems. We want to find repeatable patterns. Then we have the momentum shift. And you can see the momentum shift is a clear sign that we are resuming back to bearishness. We are breaking out of the flag. The moving average has been tested here, but it was rejected. We never really made it out of the channel. We not even come close to the previous high. So the, the downtrending structure was never challenged. And then we have to resume back into bearishness. And it's very important that of course, we can see we have the moving average, we have the lows, we have the overall downtrend and everything looks bearish, but we don't get short unless we have a clear signal that we are breaking out of those patterns. We are waiting for a clear sign that we are resuming back to the bearishness. Some traders may say, but if I wait, I will miss a lot of profits. That is true. However, what you will experience is that your trade quality will work out much better. So what you will generally see is that your win rate improves and you may give back a little bit on the reward to risk ratio. So your, tr your winning trades still can be quite large, but they will not be as large as if you just randomly guess and hope for the best. So that's the trade off that you have to take, especially as a new trader. And I've been coaching hundreds and hundreds of traders. And what I've seen that, especially in the first six to 12 months, is that you are way better off with a trading system. There's a higher win rate because a higher win rate means that you have 
more positive feedback, you have more winning trades. Even if you're not hitting a home run every single time you have a winning trade, the positive feedback is way more helpful to your trading mindset and to your emotional side. It's way easier to trade than having a system where you get your occasional big winning trade, but you have a lot of small losers in between. So I would recommend follow such an approach. And again, we could add the pivot point. The pivot point changes, right? We traded above the pivot point here on the left side. We traded around the pivot, rejected it. We moved back into the pivot point. And even if you overshoot the pivot point sometimes, that's totally okay because as I said, we wait for the market to resume into the trend direction that we've been anticipating. At that point, this is a pivot point rejection. We tried to get above it, we failed, and that's another bearish signal. And then you can see afterwards, we resume the bearish downtrending phases. Now let's take a look at market symmetry and trending and corrective phases. So when we look at a trend, and this works for trends, obviously, we are not looking here at ranges, but we wanna look at trends. So what we have is trends unfold in very similar ways. And we have an impulsive phase. The impulsive phase, sometimes it's also called the trending phase. That's where the market makes the biggest push. And then we have a move against the ongoing trend direction, right? And that is what we call a corrective phase. And obviously this interplay between corrective and impulsive waves can look very different. And there are many ways how this can play out. However, it should be the case that the impulsive wave is longer than the corrective phase. The, the corrective phase is generally shorter and typically never reaches the previous high. That's very important. And then you can see we move over from corrective to impulsive phases. And this is the underlying rhythm of how many trends will unfollow. What we can do is to understand this pattern is that we add the uh, Fibonacci's. And the Fibonacci is a percentage tool. It helps us understand the ratio between trending moves. So we put our Fibonacci from here, the highest point, to where this impulsive wave ends. And it is 100%. From here to here, the Fibonacci uh, visualizes 100%. And then you can see the retracement goes back to the 50 level, which means it is halfway or back to the highs, 50%, right? Then you can see we have a reversal back into the lower side and we have a run into the Fibonacci extension levels, which are 138 and 161. So the distance from 100 to 138 is 38%. So it means we are making 38% of the previous trending move to the downside. And this market symmetry is very important because it is true because of what happens behind the scenes. The reason why the market moves in such a way from this low to this low and then pulls only back 50% is because how many buyers and sellers are interacting. So there's a certain amount of sellers pushing down the market here and there's a certain amount of buyers pushing the market back up here. But obviously it seems like there are plenty of more sellers here because the market and the bullish phase was not able to make a big run. So we have significantly more sellers and selling orders. And then this ratio will unfold going forward again. First we make the move 50% back to the lows and then 138 back 38%. So we make almost another 100%, right? 50 plus 38 is almost 90%. And then you can see we have 61, so 111 something percent. And this is the market symmetry. And this is so important because it helps us in understanding how far are trends likely to move. A trend is very likely to move back into 138 and 161 if it's a healthy trend because just the amount of buyers and sellers are interacting here. It wouldn't be very reasonable and it wouldn't be very likely to expect a market to move much, much further to 200, 300 or whatever. So this market symmetry is very helpful in understanding the projection of trends. So this is what I've been referring to. We have a strong impulsive phase, weak corrective phase, strong impulsive phase. But we also see this on a macro level. So this is the snippet and this snippet is what we observed here, down, up, down. But this also happens when we zoom out and keep following the market, right? We have the bigger picture trend. We have the downtrend here from here to here. That's 100%. Then we make it here to 38%, shoot up a little bit higher. And then we make our Fibonacci extension to 138. So from here to here, that's 61% and 38 is another 100%. See how that works? 
and that's very important. So this leg has 100% and this leg has 100%. So that's really important to understand, especially if you want to be a trend trader. And then we can use that in many different ways. So let me show you how to use market symmetry. So we start by finding an initial impulsive wave and then we make our Fibonacci's and we can see we have a run here almost back to the 38. So I know a lot of people are now going to jump into the comments and say, hey, my pivots look different. I have my 61 here and I have my 38 here where you have your 61. That's totally fine. It doesn't really matter because Fibonacci's are percentage. If you take 100 and you subtract 38.2, guess what comes out? 61.8. And if you have 100 and you subtract 61.8, guess what comes out? 38.2. So it doesn't matter the labels. The importance is that you understand the ratios here. I choose to use it this way because I've been using Fibonacci's for well over 15 years in this exact way and I'm just used to understanding it. I don't get hung up on the labels. I know what the market symmetry is telling me. I understand the differences here in the length of the trending. So if it looks different on your chart, so be it. You don't need to run into the comments and tell me I'm using it wrong. This is percentage based. It doesn't really matter. And how you use that now is that once you identify the impulsive wave and the corrective wave, you can wait for the market to put in a pattern at one of those FIP levels. And here you can see we have lower highs. We have a trend line that we can use. We have a pivot point rejection that we can use. And this is how you can then improve your robustness of the patterns that you're looking for. Don't just trade because the market hit 38, the market hit 50. That's not good enough. That's not going to be a winning strategy. But try to improve your system by making it more robust. Look for other confluence factors. Look for patterns. Look for signs the market is turning around. You could look for a triple tap. You could look for head and shoulders. You could look for whatever, a trend line breakout, a pivot rejection. Anything goes, but don't use Fibonacci's or whatever I show you in this video alone on its own. Always try to build a strategy where you have more than a confluence factor. You can see we break out below it, we retest the pivot point from underneath and then we unfold and then we make it first into 138 and if you're just starting out you will see that 138 I don't like the word safer in trading because nothing is really safe in trading and nothing works 100% of the time but obviously 138 is much closer than 161. So if you want to go for a target that is closer to your entry, that means you have a higher chance of price reaching it. 138 is usually a good choice. 161, you can see the market did reach 161, but it took a long, long time. This is two and a half days here. And as a day trader, being in a trade for one and a half, two days is very, very long. And you can see we had a pivot point retest and we made it to the move. but this is probably very hard to sit through, especially if you have already been in a good trade, you are maybe sitting on a lot of profits, maybe it's end of the week and you want to close your trade, you don't want to ruin your week, that those are very hard decisions to make. So in the beginning, practice getting in with a, sh a shorter, more close target, and generally speaking, you should see an improvement of your win rate. So now let's take a look at how we do multi time frame analysis, and we're looking at deceleration. Deceleration basically just means, if you Google the term, that the market is slowing down. And what happens here is that we are in a strong uptrend and we hit the previous high, a very important level. You can be sure that probably everyone is aware of this. If you've been buying up this market, there's a very high chance you're going to have your target somewhere up here. And that is why it's so important to be aware of key levels. In general, if you want to improve your, your trading, I would recommend always plot the high and the low of the week of the month. Look at historic highs and lows. Those are very, very important levels that a lot of traders use for reference on their trades as well. And then you can see what happens is that we are starting here first with very strong bullish candles. And then we have a sequence of inside candles. We have one, two, three, four inside candles. That shows you the market is slowing down. And then we have a very strong bearish candle. The strongest bearish candle that we have seen here during this whole up, uh, uptrend, right? Another momentum shift. So this is the higher time frame, the four hour. And at this point, I would feel quite comfortable going to the lower time frame and taking this bias, the bias being short, to the lower time frame. And I want to look on the lower time frame for an entry. Why I want to do that? Because generally speaking, 
on the lower time frame, you can get in your, your trade in a much more effective way. Your stop loss is generally much closer, which means that you get a good reward to risk ratio very easy. On the higher time frame, your, your holding time will also be much longer because just everything takes more longer to play out. So that's when we go to the lower time frame. We're not automatically going short yet because we see that. We want to go to the lower time frame. Keep in mind that we want to be short, but we want to find a favorable opportunity. And if there's no favorable opportunity, so be it. There will be another move where this happens and then we'll get a better opportunity. But let's see what happens. And when we go to the lower time frame, we can already see that we had a pattern here. If you put an RSI, you will see that you have a divergence. We have here the support level that was broken and the market made a move. So at this point, right now, obviously, do you want to go short now? No, you don't want to go short now. You want to see for something to happen that would give you a good bearish entry point. It could be a retest of the previous uh, support that could be turning into resistance. It could be a stop run back into the area that we have seen here because the, tr the breakout traders, they would have their stop somewhere up here, right? So let's see what happens. Again, at the moving average, I use the 100 and the uh, daily pivot point. For now, we have a bullish tr pivot structure, but you can see we are below the pivot for the first time. So we wanna see what happens afterwards. And we can even go to one more lower time frame. Now we go from the 15 minute to the five minute. And this is how it looks when the market moves back into this area. So what I would recommend, wait for the market to get back into the pivot point to the structure here, then you drop to the lower time frame, and this is how it looks on the lower time frame. And now you can see we went all the way from the four hour to the 15 minute where we saw the pattern, we waited for the market to get back to this level here, then we jumped to the five minute time frame, and now we can really, really get into a trade where the stop loss is very aggressive, your reward to risk ratio will be quite large and you have the bias from the higher time frame on your side. So that means that you're trading with the higher time frame. So we have here a good exhaustion pattern. We have a double top, a very big run here and then an exhaustion. So what I would like now, the only thing that I would be waiting for is a break here below this area. So I only want to see the market break below that. It means that we have successfully retested the pivot as resistance and that is what happens afterwards. Granted, the market didn't unfold in an easy way. You can see this where we left off, we broke it, we may have moved back into the uh, stop zone and then we collapsed lower. But the point is not how this would have played out in this exact example. And I, by purpose, included a non-textbook example so that you understand not everything will work out in a perfect way. But if you take this trade over and over and over again, hundreds of times, then you are very likely to end up with a positive edge over the long term. So that's the point of any trading system, really. You want to make sure that you can find a pattern like this many, many times, trade it in exactly the same way for dozens and dozens of times. And when the winners are larger than the losses and you have enough winners to cover your losses, you will end up with a winning trading system. So now I have a multi time frame example, but now we look at a flag continuation. So we see what we have seen in the past, impulsive wave, corrective wave, and we are able to define the corrective wave with a trend line, which is good because a trend line helps us to be a little bit more objective. Although trend lines are not the most objective thing we can find, they're a good starting point, but we can improve on that. And again, this is no secret anymore. There's no magic. We add the pivot point in this case, because we are on the two hour, we want to opt for the weekly pivot point and we are going for the 100 again. And we can see we broke the pivot point, uh, the moving average. The pivot structure did change. We now have lower pivots because of the strong um, impulsive wave and move back into the pivot. Very strong cluster here. If you would add the, the Fibonacci's, you would have probably a 50%, maybe not quite. And you have here a retest. Then we can use our support resistance level. And this could be a great trading plan, right? We want to make sure that we are getting below this. And at that point, we can move from the two hour to the 15 minute. And on the 15 minute, that's how it looks. We have lower highs, we have a good level, we can see the trend line here, and that will help us with our trade expression. We can see we have a pattern break, and a lot of breakout traders will jump on this stop zone somewhere up here. Very um, conservative traders will put it all the way above the high more aggressive traders, a little bit lower. We have a stop run here. This could easily be news driven. It doesn't matter why it happens. And news often, news do sometimes change the market sentiment. Don't get me wrong, but very often news 
just speed up what would have happened anyway. So we have the stop run. At that point, you don't want to be short because the market shows us quite some rejection here to the downside. So we wait a little bit. And you can see we have the momentum shift coming afterwards. And at that point, I would feel quite comfortable getting in short. Uh, and you can see we get in with a stop loss somewhere up here, very tight stop loss. And keep in mind, we're trading this in the larger trending picture, right? We're going with the larger trend. So on the lower time frame, if we get a tight stop loss, we can really push our reward to risk ratio because you can see sometimes the market unfolds in those ways and you can really get huge reward to risk ratio trades in that manner. And again, you could use your Fibonacci's as I've shown you, put it from A to B, see where we to C, and then see where will the 100% uh, projection be, maybe 138, maybe if you're very aggressive, 161. You can also use obviously Fibonacci's to create approach where you have multiple targets. One target at 100, one target at 138, and one target at 161. And they don't have to be equal. You can have a much bigger target at 138 than at 161. So that could be also ways how you can design it. And that's it. I hope you learned something. I would really recommend you rewatch it, maybe share some notes. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I look forward to hearing from you.